knowing where conflict comes from and knowing the purpose of conflict is fine. But when you're in a conflict situation and you find yourself tensing a bit and beginning to get this focal vision on the one end of the stick or on the blue or the red side of the box, what can you do about that? How can you handle it? Well, of course, the enemy of handling conflict is tension and stress. So for a leader in particular, and if you're trying to handle conflict of any sort, at home, at work, with friends, anywhere, then you are in a leadership position. In order to handle conflict, we have to go right back to basic principles. First thing you need to do is lead yourself. <sighs> Remove as much stress as possible from yourself using the techniques we've talked about in this program. The second thing to do is to remember that I need to be to access and maintain that adult space in myself so that I can try and create an adult to adult relationship rather than a parent-child or a child-parent, a balanced adult-to-adult -adult relationship. And the third thing is to remember that as a leader, my purpose is to achieve the purpose, not to win the argument, but to achieve the purpose that gave rise to the argument in the most effective and most efficient and most positive way possible. So remember these three things. Self-leadership and the reduction of stress and anxiety. Access and maintaining the adult position. And linking to remembering and linking to the overall purpose that gave rise to the argument. Then what? Well, recently there was a, a book, a whole philosophy, if you like, that came out. Originally it was called Nonviolent Communication is now more frequently referred to as compassionate communication. And these models are used both in small areas of conflict one-to-one, -one, but also in global conflict resolution. And there are some basic principles that we can learn very quickly and apply. Fundamental to this is that when conflict occurs, it's usually because some essential need of the person or the group of people has not been met. So think for a moment of the last time you felt really <clears throat> outraged or upset. What caused that? <laughs> you might say the other person caused it. Look what you made me do. But we know from emotional intelligence and all the work we've done on that, that actually we're responsible for our own feelings. So if I think back to what the times when I feel really <clears throat> outraged and upset and angry, it's usually because some of my basic needs, which relate to my basic values, have been violated. So, for instance, somebody has not given me enough respect. Somebody has not stopped to listen. They've just gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody has been rude or inconsiderate. Or somebody has been unfair or unjust to me or to somebody I can see or in a situation. Or somebody has been dictatorial and put somebody down just to feed their own ego. So all of these things indicate certain needs I have that can be expressed through values. Respect, balance, compassion, generosity, engagement. And when these basic needs I have are violated, then I feel outraged, I get tense, and I lock into conflict with that. If I'm in a leadership position and I'm trying to communicate with that person, that is not useful. In fact, it is totally dysfunctional. So how can I step back? Well, using those three principles we mentioned earlier, I can then begin to communicate. And this is where there is a very simple model that comes from compassionate communication. It's called OFNR. O F N. -R. The O is for observation. And the fundamental principle here is to separate the person and the behaviour. It's like when you have a child. We try very hard, I hope, not to go, you stupid little boy, you stupid little girl. But you separate them by saying, look what you 
have done? How could somebody like you do something like that? Separating the person and the behaviour. People can learn different behaviours, but as soon as they're labelled as something, it's very difficult to change. So the first thing is the observation. Something like, when you say that, or when I see that happen, it makes me feel upset. It makes me feel as though you're not hearing me. It makes me feel as though I've wasted my time. It makes me feel little or small. It makes me feel as though you don't respect my point of view. N is for need. I need for you at this moment to actually hear what I'm trying to say. I need for you to understand what I'm trying to put across. I need to know that you respect me. And fourth is request. When I observe this, it makes me feel this. I need that. So please, before we move on, could I just go through this once again and hear your views on what I'm saying so that we can then discuss the thing again? I need, or can we then, from this point on, understand this from a different perspective? So it ends in a request. What I'd like you to do now is to think of a situation where you've had conflict. Where somebody, mm, you just see them and, and you know that they're going to make you feel uncomfortable, make you give you tension, or even, in a worse case, perhaps they're a bit of a bully. They never listen, they just tell you what to do. Or, make it a bit more personal, at home, something that you'd like to talk about with your partner, but it's always thrown out. They always either get angry or upset, so it's never been possible to talk about it. I'd like you now, for yourself, to take that emotion out of it, bring yourself to the present, and actually run through this for yourself. What do you observe in that other person? So that you can say, when I say this, I see you do that. I see you get upset, I see you get angry, I see you look away and huff, I see you talk over me. That makes me feel, what? Disrespected, unheard, ignored, unimportant. I need to know, I need to feel, I need to understand. So next time, when we look at this, the next time we meet, could I ask you to try to, could I ask you to wait, whatever it is, to enable that locked in, that pattern of behaviours to change. Have a go at that now for yourself. Now you've reminded yourself of a conflict situation and you've looked at how you might handle that with the OFNR model, process. One of the things you'll probably have realised is that it can be quite difficult to put these things into practice. We've looked at where conflict comes from, we've looked at the purpose of conflict, and we've looked at some techniques and requirements for you to best handle conflict. Presence, the adult space, separating behaviour from the person, the OFNR process. But remember that you've had a number of decades of training yourself in a specific way that you're best used to in handling conflict. It might be go to be going into aggression to try and win. It might be that you back off and internalize it. Whatever it is, will be a very strong pattern for you. So it's okay when you put these new learnings into practice to not do it perfectly the first time or the second time. In fact, when you try and put these 
processes and behaviours into practice in a conflict situation. But the first time, you will see what gets in the way of you carrying it through. And that itself is incredibly invaluable, totally invaluable for your development and growth as a leader. The awareness of what causes and what prevents you from handling conflict in a very positive way is itself a learning that can enable you to progress towards that final leadership position and being able to lead a lot of different sorts of people and teams with a lot of conflict in them by creating that sense of unity of purpose, unity of action and unity of identity. So it's not always going to work. Sometimes you might be very positively handling a situation and the other person doesn't want to let go. They quite like getting angry. Somebody's taught them that when you're angry, you're really, really strong. Nobody's told them that they're throwing a tantrum like a six-year-old. You know that, but they don't. And at that point, you won't be able to tell them. So sometimes when you see that the other person is locked into their own world, Sometimes it's better just to take some time out. Or if you yourself find yourself oh, so tense that you just oh, can't let go of it, then again, it's okay to take some time out to go off and come back again at that issue. Of course, the first awareness, the really valuable awareness, is when you find yourself locked into that win-lose situation. That awareness is the trigger of changing your behaviours, to be able to handle conflict in a positive, in a meaningful, in a connective and in a developmental way for everybody involved, for the benefit of the greater good.